What is going on to you? Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gents. So today's little video is going to be like a little two-parter for you guys. So update on the red eye. Uh, you guys remember in that last video, we swapped that cable over and we bought fuel pressure back up. If you guys haven't been following along, we've been experiencing some low fuel pressure. And as I went back and checked the older logs, we've had fuel pressure, low fuel pressure problems since the beginning. The only reason we didn't notice it is because once I get over five pounds of boost, the third primary uh, fuel pump, the high boost pump, whatever you want to call it, that kicks in once we get over five pounds of boost and we get full 80 psi of fuel pressure when we're going wide open throttle so that's why it didn't really seem to show its head because whenever i went into boost all was well pressure was fine but low boost um the only time i saw it was when i bought up you know the car having those low speed drivability issues i'm positive that bucking sensation that i was experiencing every now and then i'm positive it was because of this low fuel pressure issue and it just seems like such a silly thing. To, this is the, the reality of modern cars. You go down a rabbit hole of what you think it might be. It could be this. Let's try this. Let's try this. And this whole time, it just comes right back to fuel pressure. I'm thinking that the fuel, that the freaking, uh, the drivability was, oh, that's just tune related. We don't worry. We're going to work out the kinks with the tune. I just got to get them some cruise files and we'll get it ironed out. Nope. It's low fuel pressure. That was a problem all along. And somehow, some way, we both didn't see it. Well, me really, because I don't know what the hell I'm looking at in the tune file. But I've been learning. I know what I look for now and i've been finding out so i threw the laptop in here this morning when i got in my idle file seems to fire up just fine seems to idle just fine no crazy you know uh fuel pressure fluctuations anything like that when it's just idling along it just holds steady right about 56 57 um cruising along gets up to about 60 and you know that's the highest i really got it to so i got it to about 70 miles per hour and right around 70 miles per hour it was sitting around 65 ish psi for fuel pressure so we're looking good there so this is nothing crazy going on there was no crazy bucking i couldn't even get it to do the bucking i tried everything that i would normally do to get it to do the bucking you know on and off the throttle that's when i seem to be able to induce the bucking is when i would get on and off the throttle and then you know it'll hesitate do whatever whatever whole time obviously because of low fuel pressure but because the fuel pressure is normal now i wasn't able to do that so that's a good sign unfortunately that's not a fix that's a temporary band-aid at least the car is drivable right now but i'm not going to be out here wide open throttle because these are two secondary pumps and they're mostly meant for what you see right now is you know just driving around putting around town and stuff so although that's all fine and dandy that's not really a fix it's more like a temporary band-aid for the time being but the car is drivable but uh, we're running around on two pumps instead of the full three and a triple pump fuel system. So obviously not, you know, the best, but the car is running and, you know, I, I didn't get a video because I was too busy data logging, but don't worry. It drove. I promise you did. On the other hand, um, I had to get a new daily. I had to get a new daily just because I knew the... The, the second I knew the second that I dumped money into this thing it was, I'm gonna turn you guys around to see it daily I, um, some of you might have saw it coming I don't think anyone saw it coming to be honest because it's not my usual tip, type of vehicle and uh, I'm only gonna get into the other choices one in, in a second but um, I knew the second that I dumped money into this car my daily was gonna start having problems and for a fact to the to a T it did I freaking knew it was coming I had that freaking Malibu if you guys don't remember it was the Malibu 2012 Malibu had about 185,000 right over 185 185,000 miles um, at the time and I came out here the other day changed the uh, oil on the Jeep and moved on to change the oil on the daily because I knew it was about time and I'm, I'm gonna turn you around and try not to show you guys the car real quick this is this is what happens every time I park the Malibu just oil drops I will park it in the dirt I'm gonna I can't show you guys the dirt yet because the other car is there but whenever I park it anywhere I have a, a parking spot that you can easily go to at my job if you go to the work go to my parking lot you can find where the hell I park at. If you go to the gym, you can find where the hell I park at. Obviously, I don't park it up here. The only reason we're here is so I can hurry up and get it cleaned out so I can go take it to the dealership. And, you know, they sniffed it out so freaking fast it wasn't even funny. But, as you can see, that's not a cool deal. So, the car did have other issues. It was a laundry list of issues. So, uh, I'm going to run through them real quick. So, on top of the oil leak, which just, you know, it's got oil, it's leaking, so it has oil. So just fill it up, keep going, right? So that's what I live by. There was so much oil upon that car that there was no way to trace down where the hell it was coming from. So I just kept adding oil into it. It's that simple. Over time, my headlights, I had to replace both low beam headlights twice. I replaced them up when in North Dakota shortly after I fir first got the car. Then maybe a year after, the lights started flickering again, and I would have to like do the whole 
kabunk, like bunk it on the freaking headlight and it will come back on. But that was, you know, a temporary fix and it didn't last. And after a while, they freaking both burnt out again. So I had them replaced again. So two times, like I said, and after the second time, I was just like, I'm not doing this again. Uh, cause I spoke to the mechanic who came over here and helped me swap out my freaking, uh, my alternator, helped me do that. And he was like, yeah, after a while, they, the Chevys are known to freaking burn out with those headlights, man. Um, I, I, there, it's like that on mine. I don't even replace them anymore. I just run around on high beams. I was like, that's a damn good idea. So that's what I've been doing. I just been running around on high beams. Granted, um, the high beams on the Malibu, I, I don't care what anyone says. They're not bright at all. I, there's no tint on that car and I can barely see like ahead of me. So the high beams are just fine <laughs> i don't know how they didn't burn out but I've, I've just been doing high beams so the headlights the oil leak my armrest on the driver's side door just came off just came off i don't know what the hell was up with that but it just just came off um what else i'm, I'm gonna use this car because uh i can i can i can go through the problems so yeah the the oil leak the door handle my cruise control button just stopped working I would press in the button and it's supposed to stay pressed in until you press it and then it releases itself. But when I would press it in, it would just come back out. It just, just stopped. The cruise control button literally just stopped staying in. So I couldn't activate cruise control unless I held the button down. Kind of like I was freaking playing on a PS2, 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 a PlayStation controller or something like that. Like I had to, had to physically hold the drive button in order to engage cruise control. So that was pretty annoying. Uh, nothing deal breaking, you know, just, just old car problems, 180,000 miles, like I said. So whatever you know little stuff like that it's gonna happen but after a while it just keeps adding up and keeps adding up and keeps freaking adding up um you know the typical maintenance things like the bearings and stuff i've replaced that on the car um didn't have to replace the battery i don't know how but that battery lasted a long freaking time however if i let it sit for more than a week um i did that one time came back from a vacation drove down the street car died on me came back put it on a tender overnight and hadn't had a problem since so the battery is uh was iffy but it I didn't need to replace an entire time I had the car. So I can't ask for anything else from that car. Uh, the AC, I couldn't let the AC idle. If I, if I was sitting still, I couldn't just sit in my car and enjoy my AC idle. If I come to a stoplight or stop sign, if it's too long, I couldn't just sit there and let it idle. Car going past, let me just give it a second. Because uh, if I sat there for too long, it would just start smoking. And that's what fried my alternator the first time was um, all the oil and all that stuff. It just wasn't powering the alternator right. And I guess I'm slipping. I don't know what happened, but my alternator got fried. The belt was just all mangled around it. And then I just saw a poof of smoke around the car and I had no AC and no power. So that's why I had to replace the alternator the first time. And once I saw that happen the second time, like I saw some smoke and I immediately turned the AC off or turned the car. I just turned the car off and I was just sitting in the freaking hot. I was like, well... Now I can't idle again. So it happened again, but it didn't break my belt and it didn't fry my alternator. So kudos there. And I think there's a few other things with the car, just minor inconveniences just kept adding up, kept, kept adding up. But what sealed the deal was, I'm pretty sure stemmed from this, was when I went to change the oil in that freaking car, as you can see, car passing by, and I noticed metal shavings in the oil. Now, I'm gonna sit it right here, which one? For those of you who don't know, but just try to guess which one. Yeah, you can already tell. <laughs> it was this guy right here. Look at it. All that gunk and buildup just stuck in that. This this is not an old filter, guys. This looks like it has 60, 70,000 miles on. This is not a 60 or 70. I just changed it back in February or March. March. Just changed this damn thing back in March. Look at all that gunk, man, between the ridges. Look at that. Excuse my ashy ass hands. I'm sorry. I, I was washing them this morning because I had to eat. But you can see the metal flakes, man. Look at that. Looks like glitter. You see them in the oil pan. So once I saw that, I knew my time was limited and I I needed another daily quickly because you know with trying to get this thing back on the road i wasn't too sure i didn't want to go somewhere and you know be stranded or something like that so i needed a new daily so let's go ahead and without further ado let's go ahead and turn around show you guys a new daily there she is here you go 5.7 him i um i oh i do have the key let's go grab it real quick uh, yep, this is the good key. Got a good key and a bad key. 
it's pretty gunky it's pretty old 110,000 miles and i'm going to show you guys the inside man this thing does not look 110,000 miles i didn't like the uh the clear bra because you know over time those things crack they fade and they're a pain in the ass to get off when they get too old so i'm probably going to end up removing that but let's go ahead and hop in the car look inside this freaking car man damn near pristine obviously 110,000 miles we got a little bit of seat wear but nothing compared to the other mopars and other cars just in other cars in general because like i said there were other choices doesn't smell like smoke vents are all attached radio is actually oem man this thing's mint this thing is mint Obviously, 110,000 miles, it's not going to be perfect, but for 110,000 miles, it looks damn good. And I couldn't, I couldn't, let's go ahead and fire it up for you guys, man. I know you guys want to hear. Obviously, I don't plan on going crazy with this thing at all. As a matter of fact, it already has a K&N intake. Fire it up for you guys. Boop. has somewhat of an exhaust on it because it is resident in California I'm assuming they didn't want to go too crazy I think it's quiet I'm pretty sure it has an exhaust leak because I hear it more from up here than back there like I don't hear anything coming out the back of the car let's go ahead and pop it up obviously you know they throw all this damn dressing and stuff up there can't fool me they try to make it look spiffy and brand new so your eyes don't get attracted to the problem areas and stuff like that but or wonky ass k and filter. I'm gonna have to get that thing out of here. It looks disgusting. Uh, if I don't replace the entire box or something like that, I at least need to get the filter replaced. I've already done the cabin filter this morning. Swap that out. Um, gonna do a coolant flush. As you can see, we're pretty low on coolant. I told them to fill it up before we leave. You know, wonky ass dealer. Of course, they're not gonna freaking listen. Um, so I already have the coolant for it. Actually, it's in the Jeep. I got the coolant. Got my distilled water. Gonna do that some other time because it's already too damn hot. This morning I was playing around with the filter and stuff like that, but I uh, think I'm also going to swap out the tank while I'm under these two little bolts right here. This guy and then that third guy down there should be, yep, right there on the side. So that should be an easy little swap out. No crazy ticking, no crazy clacking, smooth idling, smooth cruising, man. AC blows cold, I can actually sit in the AC and let it idle. So yeah. Score one for the winning team, man. Golly. I didn't really get to check the brakes like I wanted to. Obviously, you know, we got we got a little bit of body. A little body damage, little, little bumps and bruises and stuff like that. But nothing crazy, man. Nothing crazy. So that is the new daily. Um uh, might need a new daily for my daily. I'm not going to lie. We say what I, I still got freaking OEM headers. I got a catch can over there I can throw on this thing. I got the freaking the, the Hellcat headers back there I can throw on this thing. Um, take the seats out. I'm pretty sure I can fit the drag pack. Pretty sure the drag pack will fit. Even if the drag pack doesn't fit, we could try freaking putting the 20s on there. See what happens with that. Because these are what? 18s, I think? I know what the hell size they are. I didn't look. I just know they were womp womp. <laughs> Yeah, 18s. 225, 60, 18s. What are they? 18 by 8s or 18 by 9? I think 18 by 8. Either way, that is the new daily. Had to replace the Malibu. Needed it ASAP because, like, I freaking knew it. That Malibu lasted for so long. And the second I started putting money into this car and going full on, Malibu decides it wants to die, man. But that's all I got for you guys, man. Update on the red eye. Like I said, she is running. She is driving. We've sent the logs off. Uh, it is Saturday right now, so you probably won't get to review them today. Sometimes he comes in on Saturdays. Uh, sometimes he doesn't. It's just, you know, up in the air. But Monday, we should hear back from on the logs. And hopefully, we get a word from four on what we're going to do about the fuel system sometime here in the near future. I know they don't have a warranty, but that was a brand new system out of the box. Like, yeah. It's gotta be something we can do right but i don't know we're gonna see what they say uh he's reaching out to him so we're gonna let him handle it 
Um, he has a lot more pull than I do with the company. Obviously, you know, they got re relationships and stuff like that. So we're going to see what happens. I'll pr worst case scenario, I end up having to buy a new pump, but the rest of the system is all good to go. So nothing too crazy there. It wouldn't hurt, it, but you know, it is what it is. This is the reality of modifying cars, man. It could be bad. It could be good. You can last a freaking year. You can last 15 years with no problems. Who the freak knows? Um, but it seems like these pumps or one of the pumps is already dead out of the box. So like I said, just waiting to hear back from four on what the uh, course of action is going to be. In the meantime, I got this little guy to hang out with or big girl, little girl, big girl. Oh, that sounded wrong. I got this old girl to hang out with. Um, what do you guys, what do you guys like, man? You, you like the new daily? Or you like the red eye? Who? What we rocking with, man? What we rocking with? The five seven. I'm back in a five seven. I did. I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't think I was gonna see a five seven again. I really did. Back in a freaking five seven, five speed, eight speed, six point two supercharged, thousand horsepower, barely cracking three hundred horsepower over here. But it, it was fun. I enjoyed driving this thing back home, man. It hasn't given me any issues yet. But you know, you always gotta be weary on these dealer cars, especially these as is buy uh, buy as is cars. But you know, as of right now, I haven't seen any problems with it. But there she is, and that's the update on the red eye. So, on that terrible bombshell, folks. If you're first time stopping by, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you guys get a notification when these videos go up. So, so go to the Instagram channel, low three seven six slow, all one word. I'll put it down in the description. And uh, until next time, two of you. I'm out. Peace.